you come ready to worship this morning? Ready to give God all the praise and all the glory? Did you come ready to lift your voices and praise Him today? For He is good and His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our God is so good. He created us just like Him. That we can speak and we can pray. And He delights to hear our praise. He delights to hear your voice lifted and magnifying Him. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Glory to God. Let's praise His name this morning. your voice unto the Lord. So come on now, praise, praise His name. Hallelujah. Praise, praise His name. He's good to you. Praise, praise His name. Praise, praise His name. Give Him glory. Give Him glory. Give Him all.
him honor, magnify and sing, give him glory.
in our lives. We thank you today, Father, for that open door, that open way that the blood has made for us. And so we take advantage of that way this morning. We come boldly into your presence. We thank you, Father. Everything that you are is in your presence. Everything that you have for us is there in your manifest presence. Father God, we come to obtain today. We'll not leave this place without what we came for. We came hungry. We came, Father, in faith. We came believing, Father, that needs will be met across this room this morning. We thank you for every person that's here. We're grateful, Father God, for their lives and the plan you have for their lives. And we thank you today's service by the anointing of your spirit and by the utterance of your word will advance us and, and bring us all forward into the furtherness of your plan. We ask you to teach us we ask you to give us understanding of your word. We believe we receive it, Father, and we'll give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, for the renewing of our minds through your word today. And we give you praise in advance because when we pray, we believe we receive it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. How many of you believe in God for what God has for you this morning? It's not enough just to come see what's going to happen. We come believing that we lay hold of what we need. It's a matter of faith, right? Hallelujah. And I believe that you'll receive exactly what you come believing for. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see everybody today. I mean, you came to church when you could have stayed outside, and it's nice outside, but you came, praise the Lord. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I believe God has a good, thing, a good plan for all this you know, all this time together with us here today. And uh, I believe that uh, by the end of this service, you'll say, I got what I needed today. Yes. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory so God. greet somebody and tell them you're going to receive exactly what you believe for in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. They, I could tell they put their heart into it this morning. Did you, did you uh, get help by that? How many of you know praise and worship time is not just a time to us? It's, it's, it's not a concert. How many of you know a concert? People watch the people on the stage play. Real true praise and worship, we have an audience of one. Amen. The audience is not those sitting in the seats. The audience is the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And so we encourage you during praise and worship, always make that your opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to just really, to, I, I, don't, I don't mean to say that we should live this way, but really just sort of ride coattail on other people's faith to get into the presence of God. We don't depend on other people's faith in our life. But we, we can uh, get some help from other people's faith. And uh, so whenever we enter into the presence of God, they're pouring out their heart up there, entering into the presence of God. You can just say, hey, I've been needing to get some things from God. I'm going to ride coattail on their faith, and uh, help, they'll help me get into the presence of God. So uh, we have a vision. We've always shared this in, in, uh, in the church. Uh, that we we have a vision that the, the body of Christ become as one. I mean, I mean you know the Bible talks about in the Old Testament, when the worshipers and the singers and the trumpeters became as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, guess what happened? The, cloud, the, the house was filled with the cloud. That's the manifest glory of God. Amen. That's our vision for this, this congregation is that we become a one, making one sound and praising and worshiping the Lord so that the very manifest presence of God fall. Hey, if pastor doesn't even get to preach, that'd be fine with me. <laughs> that'd be fine with me. But uh, so let's reach for that together. Amen. We have shared much on that over the years about our vision for that. And uh, we thank God for the anointing that goes with us when we leave because we're all the individual temple of the Holy Ghost, right? And we don't have to go to church to, to experience the presence of God. Uh, if I was dependent on uh, the church, you know, the church services to experience the presence of God, I'd probably miss what 90% of what God has for me, you know. But we don't depend on that. But we do take advantage of that time to come together and, and join our faith with, one, you know, all of us, all of us in one accord. So praise the Lord. I believe that's what we're going to see here at, at Spirit of Faith, uh, Lee's Summit, from glory to glory. Yeah. In these services, from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Um, somebody said one time, what kind of church are you? And, and this is what we say. It might sound different than some things that some, some people are saying today, but there's a reason we say it this way. Uh, we are word and spirit. We are, we're, we are word of faith, teaching and preaching the word of faith, but we believe in moving with the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm going to go on this side and then say that. We believe in moving with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If, if we need to stop and pray, we'll stop and pray. In fact, we got some prayer times in our heart. We're going to start, we're going to start announcing those. But, but, uh, but anyway, the point is uh, the Holy Ghost, con the, you know, Jesus said in Mark chapter number 16 that he'll confirm the word with signs following. Amen. How many of you know the Holy Ghost can do more in one move of the Spirit that only, you know, maybe it lasted 10 minutes in a service or something like that? He can do more in 10 minutes than and 50 preachers preaching 50 sermons for 50, 50 hours. <laughs> yeah. So we need to give place to Him, and that's part of what we have in our hearts. I believe you, you have that in your hearts or you wouldn't be here this morning, right? Are we in unity on that? Good. Praise the Lord. It's good to be amongst people of like precious faith. It's good to see everybody. We're going to have uh, the, the uh, church in Cedar Rapids join us here, live stream. Uh, we call it, uh, what do we call it? Live stream goes out to the world. Remote feed is going to be uh, put into the church in Cedar Rapids in a few minutes. But before we get to that, I'm going to have Brother Andre come up. And his name is Andre, not Henri. Okay. <laughs> All right, just wanted to make sure. Doesn't he look yeah. good this morning? He got a new suit on. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Good morning, Spirit of Faith Family Church, Kansas City. Good morning. Just have a few announcements for you all. <clears throat> um, 
If this is your first time here, we welcome you here to Spirit of Faith Family Church. And um, we, we invite you, uh, after service, we have a, a, a little bit of information for you, some welcome packets as well, and um, that just gives some information about the church and who we are, and also about Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie. Um, and if this is your first time here, you please uh, fill out a, a visitor's card, and it's, it's a way to... Um, get some information from you about you as well. And also you can pick up a free gift at the book table as well. So that'll be available for you. Um, we have, uh, we've been mentioning this as well for our, uh, those that may be interested in helps ministry. Uh, we have been talking about, hey, we are a church that's self-sufficient here, and we are we have a, a helps ministry that's growing. And if you're interested in in helping out, we do have the applications that are available in the back, and you can feel free to fill those out. And any um, if you have any questions regard regarding that, you can feel free to ask me as well, um, and we can definitely help you out with that as well. So we welcome you if you all want to join that team there. Uh, also. Um, we've been mentioning this as well. On the uh, September 13th through the 15th, we have the Next Level Advance, and that'll be going on at uh, the Sunstream Retreat Center in Ogden, Iowa. Uh, today is the uh, first payment is due um, of $90, and uh, with a completed application and T-shirt orders, that'll be due today, um, and that'll help towards that the final ticket cost of $260. And if you have any questions about that as well, I can also assist you with that as well. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We awake this morning? Yeah, praise God. All right. God. All right. Um, this month, April, we have a new month, right? A new month. And uh, Pastor Jay has emphasized this with, uh, I want to say, past few months, with, with this year, that what God has been emphasizing for him and what he was saying is praise and prayer. Those are the two things that have been emphasized uh, with Pastor Jay. And, and, and praise God, they're following the, the leading of the Spirit because this month we are going to be, uh, as a congregation, um, just feeding on Pastor Nancy's sup a supernatural prayer life. And um, uh, it is for $14 in the bookstore in the back. Prayer moves the plan of God forward. Okay, and as we take time to, to pray, we, we can pray out the, the plan of God for our lives. Um, and, you know, in First Corinthians chapter, uh, I want to say 12 or 14, it talks about, about when you pray in the spirit, you pray out mysteries. That's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We pray out the plan of God and, and prayer helps us to to move in that realm of the, the supernatural. And it's, it's the, the realm that God intends for his children to live in. So so this is what what. What the Holy Spirit placed on God's heart, this on God's heart, on a pastor's heart uh, for this month for us as a congregation. And I, I definitely encourage you all to, to grab this book. It's a brand new cover, by the way. I looked at mine. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't see it in the back. That's because I have the old cover. <laughs> um, so, so you can grab this. You can get this book here at the back for $14, and that will be available for you. We'll be doing that as a congregation today. Um, uh, in, in unity. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> I'm going to move out of the way. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Uh, Brother Andre, I, I just wanted to mention, Pastor Jay and I have been talking about this for really for some time. Uh, this week I'll be going to the prayer conference in California. And uh, as I was having some devotion on Saturday, the Lord just, um, I would say downloaded, just put some things in my heart. There's a Pastor Jay and I have been involved with prayer groups and leading groups and prayer for several years now. There's so much inside of us that we do want to impart along that line. And that honestly, a new church, uh, you know, you may know a lot about prayer, but there's so many things just in the basics as well as the deep things of prayer uh, that, that we need to, to go over and share some things uh, that we've learned over the years. And then by precept and example as well. So I am tentatively saying that not this Monday, but the following Monday, we are going to have a time of prayer at our home uh, at the parsonage. Really, we don't call it the parsonage, but anyway. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I believe I'm going to be ministering along the line of prayer next Sunday and just different types of prayer. 
uh, and then also, and then we'll have a time of prayer on Monday night. How's that? Uh, if you're interested. So we'll give more information about that. Now, the only thing, the only thing that may be involved with that is, frankly, if I just get back and uh, the schedule or, or the flight or something like that. But we will do our very best to keep that. And then I am looking at the calendar, and Pastor Jay told me, just go ahead and go with it. Um, he uh, said, you know, you have things inside of you, and, and because he really wanted to be here. I mean, he, he's got wonderful things inside of him. And he actually took the helm of teaching on prayer at the Cedar Rapids Church yeah. for a lot of years, and then we have a, a different staff that have just kept that going. So, so we're going to do that, and at least once a month, and uh, we'll, we'll do our very best to just put that on the calendar so that you know. So if you can't come that, that Monday... That's fine. No, nobody's going to feel badly at you. Uh, we just wanted to mention that to you. We'll probably do it from a time of like 6.30 to 8. Uh, if that's a good time. Is that, does that seem a good time with getting dinner and, and then you get home early enough and all? So just wanted to mention that because uh, this, this book and then also The Art of Prayer by Dad Hagen is one that we will be following as well. Okay. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Debbie. And one last announcement, um, if you have a prayer request or if you have a need of anything, please feel free to contact the church office, and uh, someone here at, in, this, in this local area will reach out to you all. Uh, we are self-sufficient. We've taken care of our congregation, and, um, and you know, feel free to let us know if you do uh, have a need of anything. Um, and when you do call, please follow those, those uh, prompts, um, and we'll definitely um, reach out towards you and also be in communication with, with uh, those those that do need to be in communication with that as well. So praise God. That is all that I have, Pastor Jay. Hallelujah. Uh, two verses that uh, we have always based uh, our teaching on prayer and, and our prayer life on in the New Testament. How many of you know you ought to base your prayer life uh, on the scriptures in the New Testament? Poke your neighbor and say we're living under the new covenant, not the old covenant. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But anyway, the two scriptures that we base our prayer time on and base our teaching on prayer on is John 15, 7. If ye abide in me, my words abide in you. You'll ask what you will, and it shall be done. Not, not my, maybe, not wait a while. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, maybe sometimes. No, it shall be done unto you. I should get a big amen on that one. How many of you know you can have a 100% successful prayer life? And get everything you ask for if you base it on that verse. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be done. So if you want to learn how to always get your prayers answered, then and come and, and learn about that. And then the second verse we base it upon is Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer. All King James says all prayer, but it's all manner of prayer and supplication. Now get this, in the Spirit. In the Spirit. That's the native realm of the believer. That's your home in the spirit. Uh, that's, that's where we go to pray. pray. In the spirit is not a way you pray. It's a place you pray. It's a place. In the spirit is a realm. And so uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So we may base our prayer life here at Spirit of Faith on uh, the word of God, number one, like John 15, 7, and then doing it in the spirit, Ephesians 6, 18. And boy, you could spend, and there's nothing I enjoy more than praying. If God said, you don't have to preach anymore for the rest of your life, just pray for the rest of your life, I'd click my heels and I'd go, whoa, Jesus, you upgraded me. <laughs> Amen. Because it's such a big part. It's so important. Amen. Prayer is laying track for the plan of God to move forward without a grind. Now, some people come to church for the preaching, some come for the sound effects. But anyway, it's, it's <laughs> prayer. Prayer it can grease the skids, so to speak, where the plan of God can move forward. Praise the Lord. So uh, we're excited about uh, implementing this here at the church here. So praise the Lord. I just wanted to share a little bit of our hearts. You just got a little glimpse of what's on the inside of us. But uh, we'll keep on moving with that. Um, I believe we're uh, going to do the meet and greet now. Spirit of Faith in Cedar Rapids is going to join us in just a minute. So to kind of coordinate with them, we're going to get up and greet one another. And that means if you're over here, make your way over here and greet everybody you come in contact with and vice versa. All right? Let's stand to our feet and greet one another for a few minutes.
Jay? Yes. Can we can we take this time to, to honor you and your for your birthday as well? Sorry, we're, we're gonna hijack the service here a little bit. <laughs> so um, so first, congregation, why don't we why don't you join us? You got a key for us? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Three years old. You look good for three years old. There we go. <laughs> On behalf of uh, Spirit of Faith Family Church, Kansas City, and Spirit of Faith Family Church, um, Cedar Rapids, happy birthday. Thank you. Many more to come. Uh, just want to share something very, very quickly. Um, in Third John 2, it says, Beloved, above all things, I, I, I pray that, uh, you're, that you may prosper in, and be in health, and even as thy soul prospers. But if you keep reading in that, uh, that passage there, John rejoices about the brethren that comes and testifies of the truth that's in them as they walk in the truth. Yeah. And, and this brought John no greater joy to hear about his children walking in truth. Yeah. And one of, the, one of the things that you've always said is that to, to truly bless you is to take what, what you've ministered to us and go and do something with it. And uh, you have minister, ministered to the Cedar Rapids congregation for 22 years, here in Lee Summit for a year and a half, including the, the monthly meetings as well. And uh, uh, you have sown many life-changing truths that have changed all of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I mean, we, we walk and we talk and we'll continue to, to be living testimonies of the truths of God's word that you have ministered to us. And uh, you've, you've ministered truths of how to be led by the Holy Spirit, um, uh, the truths of God's healing power that flows within, within us, the truths of uh, the authority of the believer and who we are in Christ. And um, these truths that you have ministered to us of the word of God, these truths make us free. So, Pastor, thank you. And as we continue to celebrate your birthday, we pray that your your cup of joy will be as full as John's because you have all of these children that has taken the truths of God's word that you've ministered and, and been walking it out. So praise God. So on behalf of Spirit of Faith Family Church, Cedar Rapids, and also Kansas City, we say happy birthday and many more to come. And I would like to present this, this uh, card as a gift to you as well. Mm-hmm. No problem, yeah. And then also congregation after service, we do have some treats available uh, that will be at the back as well to, to continue to celebrate your birthday. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you all. <laughs> I do. No. I do. I get the whole month. <laughs> Amen. If you couldn't hear that, welcome uh, Cedar Rapids. <laughs> they asked if I get a whole month too, and absolutely, I get the whole month. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, we're just joking. Uh, hello, Cedar Rapids. It's, it's wonderful to have you joining with us today. And all of you, uh, I just in front of you, I just want to say how much this man has been a blessing to me in all these years. And we had a little bit of time off this week. It was a mini vacation. Uh, we need to take more of them, but we we actually snuck in and stayed in our Lee Summit home this week, went out in the country, did some things. We're looking around for our future home and, and what have you. So, so anyway, I just want to say what a blessing that he has been to my life, and it, 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 it's wonderful. It's, it's been like Pastor Nancy and Dr. Dufresne would always, it's been a wonderful ride, honey. And, and thank you for all that you do. And, you know, we've been able to have talks and we've just, you know, he's my best friend. 
So, and, and we just, we love one another. So we, we got to get alone a little bit. I, I apologize. I will be at the, the prayer conference this week, those of, of Cedar Rapids. So I won't see you Wednesday night, but Pastor will be there. And then I will be back next week. So here, but Pastor will be in Cedar Rapids. So if, if you wonder where we're going to be at. But anyway, in heart and thought, I'm always with you. So Don't look. Thank you. We love you all. Amen. Thank you, honey. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you for the, uh, the I, just, I just looked, and, and there was a love offering inside of there. So I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, Pastor Debbie will find something to do with it. <laughs> no, no. But uh, thank you. Appreciate it very much. I mean, it's one thing to say somebody loves you, and it's another thing to reach in your pocket, right? So that means, some, that means something. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cedar Rapids, also. Appreciate that and, uh, and, uh, and all that you do. And uh, we're going on with the plan of God. Amen? <clears throat> I tell them uh, in Cedar Rapids all the time, may as well start telling you, um, that uh, I would obey God whether, whether I, you know, I get anything out of it or not. But it sure does make the ride nice and sweet whenever you do, do those kinds of things for our, for our birthdays and so forth. So thank you. Thank you very much. And how many of you know you get a harvest off of what you sow? That was a, that was a little weak, but you do. You do. You get a harvest off what you sow. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, I guess this is a good way to lead into the offering. It's offering time anyway, so we might as well just lead right into it. Uh, years ago, I remember the Lord said to me, and uh, yeah, if you need an envelope, the ushers are there in the aisles to get one to you. I was, uh, I was at a meeting years, this is probably, my goodness, thir- this, this could have been 25, 30 years ago. I was at a meeting, at a church meeting, and uh, we were preaching there, and the Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, I want you to sow into this church. And so I said, fine, and I asked him how much, and he told me an amount that was like, it was probably 10 times bigger than anything I had ever given. Maybe, maybe not quite. Some, you know, it was quite a bit larger anyway than anything I had ever given at the time. And so I'm, I'm like, well, glory to God. I get to sow a good seed. So, so we did. And uh, come a couple of months, I think it was like two or three months later, we hit a spot financially. I say it this way. It, it's as if if money was rain, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. <laughs> and so we hit that spot, and I'm saying, Lord, uh, we, we, we just believe you for a supply. I'll do anything. You tell me to, tell me to do something, I'll do it. Just, just tell me what to do. And uh, for some reason, I said, uh, uh, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, I've already taken care of this. Of course, you know, that's the word. He's already been ahead and supplied. But then right on the other hand, he said, I already took care of this. And for some reason, I don't know why I said it this way. I asked the Lord, I said, oh, you did win. <laughs> I, don't norm- I don't normally talk to the Lord that way. But that day I said, you did win. And he said, back there three months ago, he said, I saw this coming. And he said, I had you sow that seed for this. I'm like, mic drop. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I mean, God dropped the mic on that one. That was awesome to me. And, and I said, all right. He said, just believe for the harvest off of that seed. And, and uh, do you know those, those, that was, it only lasted for about a month. But you know that was the, that month that there was no cloud in the sky month, you know. That, that turned out being the largest month financially for our lives ever up until that time. And if and there was we were traveling in full time ministry at that time, and that month had barely any you know preaching engagements in it. But it was the biggest month of our lives financially. You know what? Because God saw ahead, and saw a need that we were going to have, and He led us something to do to get us in position so that everything would be met by the time we got there. How many of you know the day you need a harvest is not the day to plant seed? God saw up there three months ahead of time, and he had us planting for what was coming. 
I mean, it was the most amazing month. I remember an usher, we're, we're, because, you know, we're at our home church a lot because we weren't out traveling back then. We were out traveling full time. But uh, we were, so we were at home church. I mean, uh, the, I remember one day an usher, I, I was walking past, the service was over. I walked out of the service, and an usher greeted me. He said, good to see you, Pastor Dan. He shook my hand, and I said, I shook his hand, and I let go, and something fell out. And I'm like, what, what, you dropped something, sir, you know? And he said, no, that's for you. Everywhere I went, money was coming to me. A friend of mine asked me to, he said, you want to go hit some golf balls? I said, sure, let's go hit golf balls. So we hit golf balls, and we came back. We were sitting in his, uh, his car in his driveway talking afterwards and because uh, I had driven to his house. And so we're sitting there talking, and he said, uh, hold on a minute. He said, wait a minute. He went in the house, and uh, he came out with his checkbook, and he said, uh, uh, he said uh, I'm, just, I'm just encouraging you this morning. These are not just story time with pastor here. This is, this is encouraging you. Uh, but uh, so he, he, got, he got his checkbook, and we continued talking. And he said, do you have a pen? I said, well, uh, no. He said, so he had to get a pen. And so uh, he, he actually wrote out a check. I didn't know what he was doing. But he, he put the, he put the uh, check on the pen, the little clip, you know, put it on there. And he st- he's sitting there talking, twirling it, you know, and everything like that. I'm like, what's he doing? And before I left, he said, well, because I, I said, you know, I got to go. He said, well, okay, but here, take this. And, and he just sort of said, everywhere I went. It was the biggest financial month of our lives. Praise the Lord. Does God just like pastor or are you in the same category where he's got, he knows ahead of time what you need and he'll supply it? How many of you know our source is not our job or, you know, because God does tell us he's, he'll bless what we put our hand to. So we should be putting our hand to something, right? Sometimes you have to say that in people because people think, you know, I sit on the couch and believe God and everything will be. No, you got to put your hand to something. And God will bless what you put your hand to. But you realize that that's not actually your source. That's an avenue through which God can bless you, but it's not your source. God can, if you limit yourself to your job, you're, 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 really, uh, you're, you're really leaving a lot on the table. Uh, what that means is God wants to do way th- things way beyond our jobs. You know, Pastor Debbie and I, we have a salary, not from this church. We're sowing our seed into this church. But uh, from the church in Cedar Rapids, we have a salary. But do you know we live way beyond our salary? My wife and I do. He say, well, you must have a lot of credit card bills. No, we pay off the credit card every month. We use it for convenience, you know. Are y'all, y'all still here this morning? Why? Because I'm living way beyond my salary because God is my source and I live according to my faith. Glory to God. So I just wanted to encourage you. It's, it's offering time. I wanted to give you some time to write out your offering, bring in our tithes. And how many of you know God is to be honored first? And, uh, and we're honoring him this morning. So I just wanted to share that. I didn't plan to share that. I planned to share something else. But, but uh, the Holy Ghost had that in mind. So are you, are you ready to give this morning? Everybody's going to so say amen. amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's pray over our offering because how many of you know God wants us really to release faith when we sow seed. He doesn't want us just to be bucket plunkers. Amen. Bucket plunkers mean we just plunk something in the bucket and forget about it. Or request that they sing, Lord, be with you till we meet again. That's not the way we sow. We sow in faith, believing that whatever we sow, it'll come back to us multiplied. Say multiplied. Lord, we come to this morning with with, uh, thanksgiving in our hearts, gratefulness for your faithfulness to us. Lord Jesus, you, uh, you are faithful to every arena of our lives, every need that we have. And Father, you're faithful to us financially as well. Thank you that you, you uh, see ahead and that you always guide us to be in position to receive whatever we need in the future. Today, Father God, we bring our tithes. We, we honor you with the first of our increase. We honor you with our substance, Father, and we put you first. 
You are to be honored above every person, every everything that works in our lives. Father God, you're to be honored above it all. We honor you. We give to you, sowing our seed. Thank you this morning, as we do, that you are multiplying our seed and causing it to be available for us to reap the harvest and come into greater things that you have for us financially down here in this life. Hallelujah. We say we're going from glory to glory. We're increasing more and more because that's what your word says to us. And we agree with it as we sow our seed. In Jesus' name, all God's people, all the faith people said, Amen. Amen. Give God a shout this morning. Thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. Thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. In Jesus' mighty name, you may be seated. to pass. Everything he's called you to walk in, he'll bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and uh, approach the word this morning in prayer. You may be seated. Let's pray. Those of you in Cedar Rapids, join right in with us, agreeing with, with, with us for the utterance that is needed. Father, we come to you this morning and thank you for your word. Lord, we honor it as, high, as the high, in the highest place of our life. We're grateful, Father God, that you gave us your thoughts written down in the Word. We receive the Word with humility this morning. We receive it with a teachable heart. We ask you to guide my lips that I might speak as of the oracles of God and that my tongue would be as the pen of a ready writer. Father God, I thank you for good soil this morning that the Word is going into, whether it be here, whether it be Cedar Rapids or anywhere in the world where people are watching this. Father, we thank you for the harvest as the Word of God tells us that we will receive if we, if we plant it, water it, and take care of it in Jesus' name. Thank you this morning for all these things and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Did you bring your Bible this morning? Go with me to Isaiah 53. Isaiah verse number, or excuse me, chapter number 53, and uh, we're going to look at something. This uh, that we're going to get into here this morning has, I was telling Debbie, Pastor Debbie, on the way to uh, church this morning, I know, I, 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 I said, well, I, this is the way I actually said it. I said, I think that if it wasn't for 
the, the word of God that I've, I've been taught from those faithful men who have taught me the message of what the word of God says, I think I wouldn't even be alive today. And then I said, I said, but here's something I know. I know if I had not received the scriptures along certain lines that I'm going to be teaching uh, you this morning, I know that if I was alive, I would be squirrely. <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but that just means I would be, uh, my mind would be harassed and tormented and oppressed and uh, it would be, my, my life would not be a peaceful thing. And I say that because of the, the, the way I got started in life. I grew up in a home with mental oppression, my, my, you know, whenever I was growing up. Uh, and the mental oppression created some, some interesting scenarios. Uh, it created uh, tension. It created a lot of things, which I won't even get into, but it was not a peaceful place. And that got on me. That oppression got on me. And I started down that path of being a very oppressed, tormented young man. And uh, even to the point of having constant headaches to where my mind was so harassed and so tormented. I don't know if you know it or not, but the devil's not nice. I think most of you know that. He is cruel. He is mean. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And one thing he wants to destroy is people's peace. Uh, peace is God and torment is of the devil. And Jesus didn't just provide salvation or, or let's put it this way, the new birth uh, for, the, for the recreation of our born again human spirit. He provided redemption for every arena of our lives. And we're going to see three arenas in this verse we're going to read here in Isaiah 53, but these aren't even all of them. These are just three that uh, includes one of them that I want to spend some time with this morning. But, uh, but redemption is uh, uh, it's, it's a, it's a mouthful. Uh, salvation is a word in the New Testament, not just translated salvation, it's translated heal, it's translated sound. It's translated make whole, uh, and, and salvation is, is uh, for the whole man in our entire lives, not just for salvation, not just have a ticket to go to heaven, you know what I mean, and just hold out until Jesus comes in defeat in other areas of our life. A lot of Christians are living that way. They're, they're uh, saved, but they're living defeated in a lot of areas of their life. And here's one area that I was living in defeat, and I have to stay on top of because Satan tries to get back in in this area, and that is in my mind, in my thought life. Now, I used to uh, be afraid when I first started hearing some teaching on the mind. I used to be a little hesitant about it because I said, that sounds like maybe mind science or new age or something like that. But let me tell you, the Word of God has a lot to say about our minds, our thought lives. In fact, you start, you start looking for it, it is everywhere. The Bible talks about it a lot. Anything that uh, New Age has gotten into, see, the, these other things, they'll twist Bible truths and they'll, they'll use them against the Word of God and out of line with the Word of God. Uh, and they'll, they'll come up with a lot of things. But uh, the Bible still is the, is the source for our information about what we're to do with our minds. Uh, and so we don't have to be afraid of this. We just have to stay scriptural. Everybody say that. We have to stay scriptural. And it came up in my heart real strong last night. I was going to go another direction. I get, this is just happening a lot with me. I was going to go a different direction, and I got prompted to go this direction this morning. I believe the Lord wants to help some of us. I need, this, I need to constantly wash myself in the water of the Word along this line, or I'd start going squirrely again. <laughs> Amen. Now, now you can look at me all sanctimonious and think, Pastor, my goodness, what's wrong? No, same thing with you. There's a lot of stuff in this world that can harass your thoughts and torment your mind. So we're going to get into this. We're going to look at this, uh, and uh, I, I'll, I'll share some stories. I, I believe we'll get into some stories of how the Lord taught me some things along this line. Because uh, look here in Isaiah 53. We're going to start in verse number 4. 
this whole chapter is amazing. But Isaiah 53, verse number 4, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, uh, the, the Greek, excuse me, not the Greek, the Hebrew literally says our sicknesses and our pains. The New Testament, Jesus quoted this uh, in Matthew 8, 17, or 8, 16, 17, down and through there. He talks about that he, he, he ministered to some sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. In the, in the New Testament, it translates it infirmities, and, infirmities and sicknesses. And so, uh, literally, in the Greek, uh, I keep saying the Greek, it's the Hebrew, that's what it says. And you can find that same Hebrew word translated sickness in, in other places. In fact, that's the main way it's translated in other places in the Old Testament. So, he's talking about Jesus bearing, look at that, underline that word, born, or he bear our griefs, and look at that, carried our sorrows. Aren't you glad he did not just carry our sins, but he carried, he bore, he took our sicknesses and our infirmities. Now, when he buried or he carried, carried our sins, in other words, when our sins were laid on him in the substitutionary work that he was doing on the cross, when our sins were laid on him, remember God made him to be sin who knew no sin. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter number, uh, you know, 5, verse number 17. Made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. He was, Jesus never sinned, but God took our sin and placed it on him. Why? So he bore it so that he, that he took the penalty for it, which was death. He took the penalty for it so that we could receive the remission of sin through faith and be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Woo As if sin never existed. You can live without guilt and without shame. But that was his substitutionary work in the area of sin. Notice here he said he did the same thing with our sicknesses and our pains. The Bible says by his stripes, when the stripes were laid on his back, there was something happening for us. Did you hear me? When stripes were put on his back, something was happening for us. By his stripes, we were healed. We're going to see that in a minute. But surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was, there's a whole lot there. And I'm, I, in order to get to what God put in my heart, we've got to skip that one. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's our sin, transgression and sins, transgression and iniquities. Now notice, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And then the verse we just quoted, and with his stripes, we are healed. Say that out loud. With his stripes, we are healed. The New Testament, 1 Peter 2.24 quotes that and says, by his stripes, we were. It looks back to the cross and says, we were not going to be. Amen. The body of Christ has too many wannabes and gonna be's in it. There's a lot of things that have already been done. By his stripes, we were healed. Praise God. Oh, that's shouting ground right there. We've got to hold fast to that truth because that, that truth is slipping from some in the body of Christ. Well, uh, for, for time's sake, I just want you to notice, if you examine this closely, because the, the Bible says we are a three-part being. We are spirit. We're really spirit beings with a soul and live in a body. The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians 5, 23. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. You read this passage closely, and you'll find that redemption, something was provided in redemption for all three of those parts of our being. This is a whole redemption. This is a complete redemption. Amen. I believe today we need more people preaching the whole gospel. <laughs> the full story. Tell the, tell the people the rest of the story. 
But here, this passage has uh, redemption for us, something in, something in redemption for us in all three parts of our being. Now, whenever it says, uh, let's go down here to verse number five, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. You really, you, you see there, that's the, uh, he, he made available to us the new nature of life without sin or the new nature of righteousness. He took the old sin nature. Sometimes people in the old, in, in, uh, that don't, don't really study the word that much, they think, thank God I'm forgiven and thank God we are. But see, friends, we got so much more than forgiveness. We got not, our, our sins are not just forgiven, they are remitted. They are as if they don't exist anymore. I know of a minister that whenever he was a teenager, he was, he was, uh, uh, rebellious and got into a lot of trouble, uh, crime, arrested, and things like that. And he uh, had a record. Anybody know what, he, what a record is? In other words, down at the police station, they know him. And so he had a record. And so, but then he got right with God and he, he answered God's call. In his case, his call, the call was to preach. And he, he responded to that and he said yes to that. And he started walking with God, getting his mind renewed, walking in the light of the word and so forth. And he, uh, in later years, he decided, uh, he was invited actually to go on a hunting trip over into Canada. And he wanted to ship his gun over there. And they said, no, not you. You got a record, <laughs> you know. So there was some things on his record that were keeping him from having some of his civil, civil, civil liberties. Well, he said, hey, I'm going to start believing God to get this off of my record. Yeah. I mean, I'm, how many of you know God already sponged it from the record? The police department hadn't caught up to it yet. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he started believing God, and he got, and he got him a lawyer, and uh, he, legally, you know, he did, he did this all, and got it all a sponge. They called it a sponge from the record. And so the, the next time he tried to go hunting and go up into Canada, he said the police didn't mention a thing about it because it wasn't on his record anymore. It wasn't just forgiven and an X put through it. Listen to me. It wasn't there anymore. That's what happened for you. It doesn't exist anymore. You can go to God talking about it and say, Lord, I remember when I did it. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. I put it in the sea of forgetfulness. Don't go fishing for it. It's down there. Just forget about it. It's gone. Amen. And on top of that, for our spirit, man, we didn't just get forgiveness. We didn't just get this, our sin remitted where it's a sponge from the record. We actually got a brand new nature, the new creation, created in righteousness and true holiness, the Bible says. Anyway, that's for our spirit, and we could spend so much time on that. But I wanted you to see that's for our spirit according to uh, the verse 5. And Now, notice, go back here. We already saw in verse 4 at the beginning and down at the end of verse number 5. By his stripes we're healed in verse 5. At the beginning he bore our sicknesses or, you know, our griefs and our sorrows, which is sicknesses and pains, literally in the Hebrew. He took that just as much as he took our sin. Hallelujah. You're not going to be healed. You already were. It was provided in redemption. So that's for our bodies. But look here what it says. So we've got something provided for our spirit and for our body. Now notice right in the middle of this, look at verse number, uh, the end of verse number 5. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Say that out loud. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Oh, now that's, that to me is one of the, I'm not, I'm talking about after salvation, after the new birth, that this is one of the most precious benefits of redemption that, that I possess. Uh, the Bible says in the amplified version over there in Romans 5, I believe it's verse 1 or so, somewhere in there, it talks about we have peace with God. And in the amplified it says we hold and enjoy peace with God. Well, listen, I've got peace with God. I got peace with others and I got peace in my mind and I'm holding on to it because I enjoy it. I've been tormented and oppressed and harassed and, and had scattered thoughts and, 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 and a life that wasn't peaceful. And now I've experienced, because of learning the Word, I've experienced this peace and this, this soundness of mind where I can go to sleep at night, I'm not tormented, and peace is better. I'm holding on to it, and I'm enjoying it. Amen. 
Now, listen, I, because of the way I grew up and being around people who were mentally oppressed um, and tormented, and I'm not saying that to criticize them, they, they, they didn't understand what it was. I didn't understand what it was. I used to be afraid of these kinds of people because you never know which version of them was going to show up. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, hopefully that's not any of us, but uh, there's answers for us if that is us. Uh, but but uh, the, the, just over the years, I've, I, especially years ago, I didn't understand people that would just fly off the handle and, and go into uh, and become somebody different. I didn't understand people like that. I do now, and I have compassion on them because I know what's, 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 what's happening. And I also know that if, if I can... Uh, if they'll, if they'll listen, I can help them. Not me because of me, but because of how God taught me what this is, how to be free from it, and how to live in a life of peace to where that's not something that they're oppressed with. And this is, some, this is one of the most precious blessings in my life. How many of you know salvation is a package, uh, package deal? Remember, uh, you know, Psalm, what is that? Psalm 103, bless the Lord, forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth, listen to that, benefits. It's a benefit package. If you go to a new job, they'll give you maybe a salary or something, and then they'll give you other benefits attached to that. Maybe you get so many weeks of vacation, maybe health insurance, you know, different things, different benefits, right? Right? And uh, that's the way our salvation package was. It came with benefits attached. It's not just so you can have your sins remitted and then live tormented in your mind. But you're right with God. That's not enough. For God, that's not enough. And for me, that's not enough because I believe God has a better way for me to live than, than tormented and harassed in my mind. He, this redemption provided something for me that goes way beyond just coping. Believers are not called to cope. Come on, somebody. Believers are not called just to kind of squeak their way through and, and, you know, kind of hope Jesus comes because I can't hardly take this anymore. You're to be living in victory down here. Complete victory. Every area of your life. Praise the Lord. So I want to get into this. Amen. Say it out loud. We need to hear some more about this, Pastor. One translation of Isaiah 53 there, verse... Uh, Four, well, actually, verse, what is that? Verse 5. <clears throat> One translation, translation says, The chastisement needful to obtain my peace was upon him. Did you get that? Whatever was needful to obtain peace for me. Now, go over to John chapter number 14 and look at me, look at, look at with me at verse number, uh, four, uh, let's see, what is it? Verse 27. John 14, verse number 27. Now, I'm going to read this. Uh, I'm going to read this in the uh, King James. I believe that. Well, for time's sake, let's just read King James only. John 14, 27. Are you ready to get, in, get into this this morning? Uh, don't, uh, don't think that this doesn't apply to you. I have found in my life that this area is some this 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 uh, understanding some of these things is something every believer needs. Every one of us will come to if if it's not something that that we grew up you know tormented with or something. Every believer will come to a place in life where they'll go through a season of the uh, the enemy trying to attack their mind with bombarding thoughts. Uh, not because of it's God's will, but because the enemy is, is after people's minds. Uh, listen to me. He's after people's minds. Uh, and these kinds of things are not just something that, oh, well, we don't know what it is. Well, we do know what it is. The Bible tells us clearly what it is. Do uh, you remember the man, I, I think it's in Mark chapter number 1, the, the, the madman of Gadara that Jesus ministered to? After he was ministered to, because uh, the Bible says he was demon-possessed. Uh, after he was ministered to, the Bible says that uh, he was, si they, well, uh, the people that saw the whole thing ran off into the city, you remember, because the, the, the 
you know, the demons ask permission to go into the pigs. And the pigs have en- had enough sense not to live with demons in them. So they said, we'll just go ahead and put ourselves into the drink. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, <laughs> you know, are you still out there? They'd rather, they'd rather not live than have this. You can see where suicide comes from. And I'm not criticizing people. I'm saying you can understand why people, they don't want to live because they're not living in victory in this area. Well, this particular man, all those demons, I think there's probably about 2,000 of them, went out of this man, went into those pigs. And now this man's free. And so the people left. They, they saw those pigs go into the water and drown themselves. And they went into the city and told everybody. And the whole city came out. And when they came out, they saw the man. Listen very carefully. They saw the man. Maybe somebody can tell me the verse here. They saw the man sitting and clothed and in his right, look at, look at that, in his right mind. You see that? In his right mind. Anybody got that? Is it the first chapter? I don't have the chapter. Uh, maybe chapter 5. Is it chapter 5? I was not prepared to look. Chapter 5, he was, verse 15. Mark five fifteen. sitting and clothed and in his right mind. You know what that means? When that devil had a hold of him, he possessed not only his whole body and everything, he possessed his mind. He had a hold of his mind. That's why he's tormented. That's why he's cutting himself. That's why he's doing what he's doing. And this is not far from where people are living today. Amen. People are tormented. And I'm not saying that to be, to be critical. I was there, and so I'm very compassionate on people like this. But, but uh, they're living with the same kind of oppression, maybe not completely possessed like this man, but Satan is, is working on their mind, endeavoring to take as much ground in their thought life as those people will let him. Even believers, if they will let him. Believers have authority over the devil, right? And they don't have to let him. But it's not enough just to say, I resist you, devil. There's more to it when it comes to the thought life. So let's look at this. John 14, verse number 27. King James, John 14, verse number 27. Jesus made this statement. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. That's, well, let's stop right there. Isn't this him bringing this peace to us that, that, uh, that he was prophesying back there in Isaiah about that the chastisement for us to, needful for us to tame, obtain peace was upon him? Jesus is saying, I'm getting ready to leave. If you look at the context of all this, he's saying, I'm getting ready to leave. <clears throat> and, and uh, you know, I'll send the Holy Spirit and so forth, but I'm going to the right hand of the Father. Of course, he's, he's going to pay the price for sin first and then raise from the dead. You understand? And then go to the right hand of the Father. But he's saying, although I'm leaving, I'm going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, you know. But I'm also going to leave you something. I'm, I'm going to leave you my peace. I'm so glad he left us his peace. Now, his peace is the kind of peace that in a boat, when the storm, was, when the storm came, he's sleeping right through the storm. That's the kind of peace he leaves us. But whenever there's a storm of trouble, you know, a storm of attacks, a storm of, of strife in the home, financial struggle, you know, bombarding thoughts, you can sleep right through it because you know how to do what this next part of this verse says. So first of all, I want you to see he leaves it for us. The, the, I believe it's the Amplified, but certainly the Greek says, I bequeath this to you. S- listen to that. I bequeath this to you. In other words, this is in the will. You ever go into the reading of a will? You know, maybe your grandfather or someone passed on, and, they, and they, there was a reading of the will, and they will say that certain things are bequeathed. You ever heard that term? This, you, this piece is in the will of God. It's in what... What, it's in all the rights and privileges of the believer. Hallelujah. And listen, he said, it's not like the world gives. This peace that I'm giving is not like the world. The world's peace depends on everything being in place and every, you know, no trouble going on in my life. Then I can have peace. This peace is in spite of what's going on. Regardless of what's going on, you can have the peace of God and not be troubled. Praise the Lord. 
So I want you to see that it's provided in, in redemption. It's, it's provided for us. But look what he goes on to say here. He, goes on, he said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Uh, I wasn't going to go to the Amplified, but I've got to go to the Amplified. Listen to it in the Amplified, that last part. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Notice those words, agitated, disturbed, unsettled. So listen listen to the, let's, let's analyze what he said here. I'm leaving this for you. It's available for you. Amen. Not just peace with God, but peace in your mind. To where your mind's not agitated, disturbed, or troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. So, so this is, uh, this, if you analyze this verse, the first part is Jesus making it available to us. The second part is our responsibility. Right? In other words... The fact that it's available doesn't equal the experience of it. Do you realize redemption makes something available? Let's just take the new birth. It makes it available to every person on the planet. It makes being made right with God available to every person on the planet. It's there for the taking. For everybody. The worst criminal. Right? Every, anybody. The new birth. Right, being right with God. It's available. It's there. But... That doesn't mean they're experiencing it. That doesn't mean they're walking in it. Right? This is what, this is the message God's given us to preach is that there's a Godward side and a manward side to everything. It's not just all God's grace. I didn't say it's not God's grace. I said it's not just all God's grace. God's grace must be received through man's faith. And that's the same thing with this, this peace in our mind. There are things that we have to do according to the way this verse is written because the provision of it doesn't equal the experience of it. I, uh, I was born again when I was 10 years old, but I was walking in torment in my mind for all the way up till about uh, 18 or 19 years. Well, I started, uh, there's, oh, there's some stories I wish, I hope I get some time to tell you some stories. But th- there, there's some things that God taught me uh, as I grew spiritually through those from 10 years old all the way up to about eight, probably about 19 till I really started getting a hold of the Word. Uh, and those years were tormented years, harassed years in my mind. Um, and, uh, but, but I had to realize that, that this was, what was going on was in my mind, it wasn't in my spirit because I had peace with God in my spirit, but the enemy was working on my mind. And I had to realize that it wasn't his mind that he was bringing thoughts to me that he wanted me to think, but I was not controlling the thoughts that came to me. I was not answering the thoughts that came to me. I I just thought, you know, if a thought comes to me, then it's just me thinking it. Not true. Not true. If a thought comes to you, it could be you just thinking it, you know. It, it could be, and I don't get into all that, but, it, but sometimes these things that bring oppression, fear, listen to me very carefully, worry, anxiety, fear, listen to this, condemnation. Are you with me? Uh, that bring anxiety to where you're troubled and you're, you're tense. Those are thoughts from the enemy. You ever read the Bible, Ephesians 6 talks about the fiery darts of the enemy? You ever ask yourself the question, what are they pointed at? They're pointed at your thought life. There's other areas of our lives that are pointed at too, but, but primarily they're pointed at our thought life. Even if they're pointed at other areas of our life, there's also one of his guns pointed at your mind at the same time. Most tests and trials come with an attack regardless of what area it comes in, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in our bodies, whether it's in some other area of our lives, financial or something. Most tests or trials come with, regardless of which area it's in, it also comes with an attack against the mind. This is so common that we, every one of us as believers need to understand how to fight the good fight of faith in this area. 
And that's what we're here to, to, to do this morning, to, to learn to do this. But I want you to see that verse. This is, you could just write to the, you know, in the margin of verse number, uh, this is uh, John 14, verse 27. You can write in the margin, the provision, the first part is the provision. The second part is my responsibility. Let not your heart be troubled. You know what he's saying right there? Since he's provided peace for us, if we're troubled or we're anxious, we're disturbed, it's because we let ourselves be that way. Do you see that? We may be ignorantly, and that's a lot of times where Christians are. I don't say that because I, I, I was the same way. But uh, maybe ignorantly, they gave place to the enemy. But the enemy will take ground whether it's through just our ignorance or it's we knowingly participate with him. The enemy will just, he's an opportunist. He'll take advantage of every opportunity he gets. And uh, ignorance of how he operates is one of his opportunities. The Bible said don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. So uh, let Satan have the advantage of us. Ignorance gives him the advantage. We've gone through these things many times teaching in the past, but I don't care how many times I've gone through this. I still come back to these basic truths time after time after time because the things he taught me years ago, they are still my answer, and they're keeping me free up here. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So are you understanding what we're sharing here this morning? So Jesus provided something for our minds. He provided peace for our minds, but there's things that we have to do. Amen. Now, um, in, my goodness, we could go so many directions here. Um, I, I, uh, let's go over to Luke chapter number 4. Luke 4, verse number 13, is Jesus dealing with what came to him in his thought life. And he is showing us how to do this. Luke chapter number 4. I used to think that the enemy appeared to say, uh, excuse me, to Jesus here in Luke 4. I thought the enemy appeared to him and tempted him. But, but then I read over in the book of Hebrews that he was in all points tempted like as we, like as we are. He's tempted, he was tempted in the same way we are tempted. The word tempted, it, impl- it includes temptation or enticement to sin, but it's not limited to that. Uh, the word temptation means test or trials also. So Jesus went through this, te- what's called in the New Testament, a temptation in Luke 4. We have record of it in Luke 4. Uh, we have another record of another time. He didn't just experience it in Luke 4 and at the end of his earthly ministry, but we have another record of another intense period of testing or trying of the enemy right before he went to the cross. He was tempted not to go through with the uh, redemption, our, our redemption. But anyway, this is the passage where we get so many details out of this temptation that Jesus had before he entered his earthly ministry. There will come seasons when you transition from one degree of walking with God into a higher degree of walking with God, one degree of being used with, by God or into another degree of being used, or one degree of increase into another degree of increase, there will come seasons of opposition. Jesus went through one of these seasons right before he increased into the plan of God for his earthly ministry. And then right before he went to the cross to go into the next part of what God had for him. Seasons of opposition. And those seasons come with attacks against the mind. And unless we are taught about what it is, first of all, and how to deal with it, it takes out many, many believers because they think something's wrong. I'm I'm, I'm losing my mind. It could be that something's right and Satan's trying to keep you from getting through the door. There are adversaries by doors. I've seen this, I've seen this over and over again. People get attached to a church, whether it's this one or many others, attached to a church that really starts preaching the word to them and, and things come all, all kinds of stuff comes up. Relationship trouble. Attacks against their mind. Attacks against other people, you know, uh, relatives get all stirred up. You know, it's, it's, it's opposite, but people don't recognize what it is. And so they think, I must be doing something wrong. So they, 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 they back off to try to keep that from happening. You don't win by backing off. You win by being doer of the word. Yeah. Be a doer of the word. So uh, Jesus showed us how to do this. Let's look at verse, uh, 
because uh, you know the three tempt. We, there was more than three, but we have record of three of the temptations. You know, cast yourself off the pinnacle of the stone, uh, a pin, pinnacle of stone. Uh, make this stone into bread. Remember that. Uh, fall down and worship me, and I'll give you all the glory of the kingdoms of the world, and so forth. After that, it says in verse thirteen, Luke, Luke four thirteen, in the Amplified Classic, when the devil had ended. This is the Amplified. It's so powerful because it's. It, it, it so describes things. That when the devil had ended every, the complete cycle, listen to that, the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him, that is, stood off from him and until another more opportune and favorable time. My goodness. Jesus never gave him another opportunity. But he was looking for it. Satan was looking for it. Now, look, notice here, this, listen to the um, International Standard Version. Are you interested in this? After the devil had finished tempting Jesus in every possible way, Philip says he had exhausted every kind of temptation. That includes what we experience about the bombardment of our mind. I've met Christians. In fact, I, I, in fact this happened one time at, at our church, a lady at our church. Uh, but, but I've met the Christians. They, they say, I just, I just think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear and, you know, cut off my phone and, and uh, you just go someplace where nobody knows me, live out in a cabin in the woods. I can't handle this anymore. You know what that is? Oppression against the mind. Huh? Don't look at me like that. I've had thoughts like that before. Right? Listen, God doesn't need you living in the wilderness, you know, surviving <laughs> in order to have victory. Victory is available right where the plan of God is for your life. I don't know why I said that. Somebody will get something out of it. Now, now the enemy... Can, can harass and hound people's minds. And that's what he was doing with Jesus. Because in every possible, notice the King James says, uh, well, the uh, Amplified says, the complete cycle. And the ISV says, every possible way. Phillips, uh, every kind of temptation. That includes the bombardment of the mind. In fact, I don't believe because Jesus was tempted like as we are, I don't believe that Satan appeared to him because Satan doesn't appear to us. And he was tempted like we are. If the devil showed up appearing to you and I, we'd go, oh, I see what it is. It's the devil. But he likes, the devil doesn't like to know, people to know it's him. He wants to put a thought in this ear and then come over around on this side and say, well, if you were really a Christian, you wouldn't think that thought. It wasn't you thinking that thought to begin with. It was him bringing that thought to your mind and then coming over here and accusing you of having the thought. Don't, don't claim every thought that comes to your mind. It wasn't your thought. Amen. Brother Adam, come up here. I got an illustration for you. I got an illustration to using you. Hallelujah. Stand up here in the front where everybody can see you on the camera. Let's say Brother Adams, because, because Brother Adams, stand over there a little bit. Let's say Brother Adam, because he's been in the church a long time, walking with God, loves God, sold out, full of the Holy Ghost, married a Holy Ghost woman. Just, I mean, he just, he, he's, he's just, he's, he's a good guy. But let's say I'm talking to him, and, and I'm, I'm kind of mean and nasty. And I'm, I'm just talking to him. And while I'm talking to him, he doesn't notice it, but I put a bag of marijuana right there in his pocket. And, uh, yeah, ruh -roh. So, but I'm talking to him and I'm just thinking, you know, just, just having a good conversation. And I say, what's that in your pocket, brother, brother Adam? And I pull it out and it's marijuana. I say, marijuana? Uh -oh. I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were, I thought you were sold out. I thought Lily had you straightened out. <laughs> Lily's his wife. <laughs> so, and I say, well, you know, well, if you really love God and you're really serving God, you're the real deal. You would not have marijuana in your pocket. And he'd say, well, I didn't put it there. Right? Yeah, it's not mine. Do that with the thoughts that come to your mind. Thank you. It, when thoughts come to your mind from the enemy of running, quitting, condemnation, fear, anxiety, 
People say, I don't, know what, I don't know if this thought is from God or the devil. Well, whatever it produces tells you whether it's from God or the devil. If it produces peace, it's from God. If it produces anxiety, it's from the devil. And listen, uh, his, your, your mind is not, it should not be free. Uh, he should not have free access to it. Right? I say it this way. I know some of us used to have a different lifestyle than we have now, so some of us will identify with this. Uh, you ever gone to a party and they have bouncers at the doors? Now, y'all looking sanctimonious like, not me, Pastor. I sanctified. And you are now, thank God. But <laughs> what are they looking for? They, there, there's only certain people that can get in, and you have to have an invitation or something, you know. Well, that's, that's, uh, I use that to illustrate the way your mind needs to be. Every mind needs a bouncer at the doors. Yes. You need to check, for, check the thought and see whether, you know, see, how do I check the thought? Scripture and verse, please. When a thought comes to your mind, Scripture and verse, please. In other words, where are you? That thought that just came to me, where is that in the Word? A thought will come to you, uh, we're not going to have enough to pay our bills. Where's that in the scripture and verse, please? Scripture and verse, please. Do you see how real this really is? <laughs> yeah, and if it's, not, if it's not in line with the word, you, you and I need to learn that it's our mind, it's not the devil's mind, and we can decide. Listen, say it out loud, it's my mind. Yes, and then the second part after that is we can decide which thoughts we, de- we choose. We can decide. We can take thoughts or reject thoughts. And this is part of what we do to fulfill what the second part of John 14, 27 says, let not your heart be troubled. You know how trouble gets in? By taking troubled thoughts. By taking anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts, condemnation thoughts. Oh, this has changed my life. This is just what I'm teaching you right now. It's changed my life. Now, so just because it comes doesn't mean it was yours. Just like I just illustrated with Brother Adam there, just don't don't let him tell you, well, if you were really saved, you wouldn't think that thought, so forth and so on. No, no. (laughs) He's the joker that brought the thought. So don't, don't claim it as your own. That's where condemnation comes from, is, uh, is that people think, well, what's wrong with me? I had that thought. Nothing wrong with you. It comes to everyone. It even came to Jesus. Did Jesus do something wrong because he had those thoughts come to him? Cast yourself off the pinnacle? He didn't do anything wrong. So here's, here's, a, here's the next thing. Uh, if a thought coming equals you being responsible for it, or let's put it this way, if a thought coming equals you taking the thought, uh, which would be wrong, see, taking the wrong, wrong thought is different than the thought coming. Let me illustrate it this way. A thought can come to your mind and you not take it. Uh, Jesus said, and this is in Matthew chapter 6, verse, well, there's like four or five times through Matthew 6, he said this, take no thought saying. Notice that. Take no thought saying. If you look at the context, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? He's talking about thoughts of worry, anxious thoughts. He's saying, take no thought. Notice he didn't say, make sure no thought comes saying. He didn't say that. You can't control whether a thought comes or not, but you can control whether you take it or not. Jesus didn't say, make sure thoughts don't come about worry. Because they'll come. You know why? Because you're living down here where the prince of the power of the air, he's all around. And he'll try to contact you through thoughts he'll bring to your mind. Now, it's only whenever we take the thought that now we are responsible for that. We're not responsible for it coming. If it came, we, we, we can't keep it from coming. But we sure can do something about it when it comes. Right? When a thought comes, you can answer it. If you have the Word of God in you enough to know what the Word of God says, you can say, that's not my thought, and that's not the truth. The truth is, and you can answer that thought, and that's what Jesus did. Every time the thoughts came to him in Luke 4, he answered and said to it. 
He, he spoke back and he spoke the word every single time. Remember Ephesians 6 talks about take the sword of the spirit. That, that's what you take against the enemy with his, with his thought. You take the word of God. Well, if you don't know what the word says, you're at a disadvantage. And he'll, he'll uh, harass you, torment you. And not because he has the authority to, but because uh, you let him, maybe not knowingly, maybe ignorantly. You know what I mean by ignorantly? Unknowingly, in other words. Um, but so a thought coming doesn't equal you taking a thought. Oh, that, that helps me because the, the enemy used to harass me. Well, you shouldn't have had that thought. Uh, I didn't think that up. I'm just minding my business, and it came to me from out here, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We got to learn this. Brother Hagin said it this way. He said, you can't keep, he's talking about the same thing I'm talking about, thoughts coming. He said, it's a little like this. You can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can sure keep them from building a nest in your hair. <laughs> Amen. For some of us, it's not as hard as others. We don't have any hair for them to build their head. But anyway. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you get the point. You can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from landing and then, you know, building a nest in your hair. Praise the Lord. Are we learning a little bit this morning? So start. I'll tell you something that I tell the congregation I preach to so, much, so often, many times up there in Cedar Rapids. And uh, I'm going to start telling you here too. Take... Uh, Take inventory of your thought life. Maybe, I don't know, do it however you want to do it, but maybe, maybe just set a random timer on your phone, and when it goes off, this is what you're supposed to do. What have I been thinking about for the last hour? You'll be shocked at the different thoughts that came to you, and sometimes you entertain them. This is why victory is lost, because we're, we're entertaining the thoughts of the enemy and therefore in unbelief many times rather than faith. Now, um, here's another way of saying this. This might not be this exciting now, but you practice this, boy, the life that you'll enter into is amazing. But uh, the thoughts that come to your mind... Now, not all thoughts that come to your mind are, are bad thoughts. So I'm talking about the thoughts that come from the enemy out here. The enemy's thoughts will come from out here. He doesn't live in the inside of you. If you're born again, he lives, he lives in the air around you, and he'll bring thoughts from here. Now, there will be thoughts that will come up out of your spirit from the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and you, you can recognize the difference because the one came from here and the other one came from out here. And the ones that come from God, we want those thoughts. We take those thoughts. We renew our mind with the Word of God and with, with what He's saying to us. But anyway, so a thought can come to you. The thing you're responsible to do is, is check for ID. Is this in line with the truth of God's Word? Once it is in line with the truth of God's Word, you accept it, meditate on it, and feed it into your thought life. In other words, when it comes to you, you don't reject it. You turn it over in your mind. That's called taking the thought. Now, when it's the wrong thought, when it's not from God, when it's a thought, you know, when I get off work, I'm going to go home and punch him in the face. <laughs> that would not be from God, just in case you were wondering. That's the <laughs> but whenever the wrong thoughts come and, and, and uh, the enemy brings those thoughts, just because it came doesn't mean you've, you've got, you're responsible for it. Now, but if you start turning it, over, turning it over in your mind and thinking it after the enemy, now you took the thought. Does that make sense? When you take the thought, only then are you responsible for it. Before that, it wasn't your response. Just because it came doesn't mean you did something wrong. Right? Y'all looking at me real, real intently. I think you're listening. I think you're getting it. Praise the Lord. This has changed my life. Now, here's another thing. You can't fight thoughts with thoughts. You can't fight thoughts with thoughts. I'm talking about fighting wrong thoughts. Uh, by the way, you say fight? Yeah, this is a big part of spiritual warfare here. 
This is a huge part of spiritual warfare. Uh, you go over to, you can go there if you want to. I'm not going to turn there, but remember 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about verses 4 and 5. It says, the weapons of our warfare are not, not carnal, they're mighty through God. What? To the pulling down of strongholds. And people saw, oftentimes they put a period there and they say, that's right. Let's go up there and pull those strongholds down up in the heavenlies. Read, continue to read. <laughs> continue to read. Pulling down the strongholds, casting down what? Imaginations. Boy, if we had time. Woo. Imaginations and every high thing, listen to this, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every what? Thought. So we've got thoughts, imaginations, and strongholds mentioned in there. Things come in the form of a thought. When you take it and, and entertain it, it'll form, a strong, it'll form an imagination. And if you let that imagination grow, it'll form a stronghold. And it's not up in the heavenlies, it's between your ears. And that's what binds people. The enemy is defeated. But whenever he can form an imagination or a stronghold in people's minds, that's what defeats them. Am I making any sense? Praise God. So it's our responsibility to not let these things get a hold of us. And if they have, there's something. Now, now these things can get a stronghold on people, but there's something more powerful than whatever stronghold somebody has, has uh, formed in their minds. Let me, let me give you an illustration of this. I've heard people, t- I didn't go through the depression. I wasn't old enough. You know what I mean by the depression, the 1929 stock market crash and all that? Uh, when people went through that, they said that generation was scarred by that. Well, unless you uh, get your mind renewed, something like that can scar you. But there's something more powerful than experiences that want to scar people's way of thinking. When I mean scar, I mean people said that that generation, boy, they were hoarders. They, they, did, they, they were, and I'm not, talking, I'm not preaching being wasteful, but I mean, if you know, you can get into bondage. You know, saving every paper cup and <laughs> amen. Uh, but, uh, but they said some, not everybody, but some in that generation, it scarred them. It affected them to where they, they, never, could, they never could really prosper after that. Why? Because Satan used that experience to form an imagination and a stronghold and really a fear that we might have to, we might lose everything again and we've never, you know, those kinds of things. Well, um, There's something more powerful than any experience you've had in the past that has bound you in your thought life. The Word of God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Let me tell you this. They're more mighty than anything that has bound you in your your mind, your life, your thought life. You can be a totally different person. My wife and I are testimony to this. She kind of grew up in some things I grew up in. And, and both of us, we, we were affected by that. But as our minds became renewed, our home became so peaceful, so wonderful. Our lives are precious today. We, we, we cherish life. We love life. We're not, this, this might sound strange. I'm going to say it in the context of living in defeat and wanting an escape hatch. We're not praying, Jesus, come right now. I am wanting him to come. I said it the other day, come Lord Jesus. Because <laughs> this world needs some cleaning up around here. But, but we're going to do our job until that happens. Get the harvest in, right? But, uh, but uh, I'm not praying Jesus come because I'm living in defeat and I'm looking for a, a way out. Amen. I want, I want him anyway. I want him to come, but not because of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, praise God. Jesus was skilled with his enemy. When Satan came in Luke 4, I'm closing with this. When he came in Luke 4, listen to the Phillips here, and when he had, this is the enemy, when the enemy had exhausted every kind of temptation, Jesus' skill exhausted the enemy. He gave up. He was showing us how to live and how we can actually exhaust the enemy. He's just like, this isn't working. 
I'm going to go find somebody else to devour. Amen. Amen. That's how good you and I need to get. I don't believe Jesus and the devil were in the wilderness tussling for 40 days. Oh, Jesus was struggling. Oh, I don't want to. I'm, I'm so tempted to do this. I don't believe it was tough at all. I believe he just said, it's written. He was a complete master. He, he used the word skillfully. You can do the same thing. Tell your neighbor, you can do the same thing. Praise the Lord. And every cycle, every way the enemy came, every lust of the flesh he tried to bring, Jesus was a complete master of it all. That's why we call him master. He, he is our example. He did it to show us how to live in complete mastery. And I am learning that my mind, my thoughts, I can completely master them. I am the master of my own thoughts. I know, I know when, what, what, when the things that come are wrong, I know what they produce. I know how to address them. I know the word to address them. And listen, you might say, well, I don't know enough of the word. I'm learning the word. Uh, but do you know the Holy Ghost will bring the word to you and make you a master? Even when you, at the time, you don't think I know what to do right now. But the Holy Ghost will bring it to you. He'll make you look like a genius. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. When I think of a master, I think of, of someone who's skillful at something. I want you to read, uh, go, go to this verse. I'm going to wrap this up. Go to Genesis chapter number 4, verses 6 and 7. Praise the Lord. I'm going to challenge you this week. Sneak up on yourself and see what you're thinking about. <laughs> you know what I mean by sneak up on yourself? Sneak up on yourself every now and then. Catch yourself. Say, okay, what have you been thinking about for the last 10 minutes? And, uh, and uh, realize that because as you grow spiritually, you won't have to deal. You won't have to. Have you ever laid down? I've done this many times. Lay down in the evening before you, you know, go to bed and, and you just kind of think through your day and you're thinking about different things and you realize, wait a minute. I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have thought that thought or, you know, whatever. Because you're there and you're more sensitive to the Spirit of God maybe. Well, as you grow spiritually, you don't have to wait to the end of the day. When the thought comes right, you can go, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm not going to take that. No, you, you, <laughs> you, you tried to sneak in there. I'm not letting you in. It's written. As you grow, you catch it quicker. All right. Did you find Genesis 4? Look at this. This is Jesus, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, God talking to Cain. The Lord said, this is verse 4, the Lord, I'm sorry, this is verse 6 and 7. This is the Amplified. If you can't tell, I like the Amplified. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Because remember, God had received Abel's offering, but he had not received Cain's offering. And there's so much to why that he didn't. Uh, the New Testament says it was a faith issue. It was also an honor issue, but whatever. We don't have time for that. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why do you look sad and depressed and dejected? If you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, if, you're, if your offering is honorable. If you, look at the, if you look at the Amplified very clearly, it says, it says Cain brought the first to God. And then it says in the process of time, Abel brought something. See, Abel brought the leftovers. God said, I mean, uh, excuse me, Cain, Cain, Cain brought the leftover. Abel brought the first. God accepted that because he put God first. How many of you know we put God in an honorable place whenever we say you're first? Not the leftovers. Okay, but uh, the Lord said, why are you sad and depressed? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Look at this. And if you do not well or you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Do you think God's unfair, unjust? Would he ask you or I or Cain or anybody else to do something we can't do? When he talks about casting down imaginations, bring every thought into captivity, can we do that? 
Can we be skilled at it? Can we completely master the enemy at his own game? Just like the Hawkeye ladies are going to do this afternoon. They're going to, they're going to master. We joined you, and we are with you with the uh, Chiefs. Now you join us with the Hawkeyes this afternoon. <laughs> Going for the championship, the ladies. Praise the Lord. But, but uh, you, ever, you ever seen sports teams play each other, and, the, and, and one team just totally run the, run the court, and the other team can't stop them? They'll, they'll, say, they'll say something like, that. this team's just owning that team, or or something like that. What do they say? They just master every strategy that the opposing team comes. That's the way you need to get with spiritual things. Yes, with the love walk. Yes, with walking by faith. But also taking thoughts captive. Master it. Get good at it. I said get good at it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get good at catching your th- Somebody said, I don't know why things keep flying out of my mouth. Well, it's a, it's a matter. Can I just be honest with you? See, I, you know where I learned this, right? I learned it on myself. The reason it comes flying out your mouth is because you took the thought. Master it. Don't just master it when it comes up your throat. Master it when it comes to your mind. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was going to quit 10 minutes ago, but you're pulling now. So it's, from now on, it's your fault that we're going long today. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Are, are you enjoying this as much as me? Look at that. But you must master it. You must master it. Praise God. I like that. You can be a complete master of things. A sound mind, because you remember 2 Timothy 1.7 talks about he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, a sound mind. A sound mind, it comes by being a master of the thoughts the enemy brings and learning how to answer them. Praise the Lord. People talk about spiritual warfare. This is the core of it right here. This is the core of it. Praise the Lord. If you can learn this and become skillful at this, this will be a big part of what the Bible talks about, renewing your mind. The psalmist talks about restoring my soul. Uh, so many things will, uh, will uh, you know, you fall into place in life. <clears throat> now, one more thing, and I'll, and I'll tell this story, and then we'll close. Um, I, years ago, when I was, you know, I told you about how I grew up, and then I told you about how that tried to get a hold of me, and I started, you know, replicating those same kinds of, you know, oppressive actions and so forth. And uh, and then I went to Bible school, and they started teaching some of these things. Not, not I, haven't got to, I haven't got to probably 10% of it. But uh, some of these things, they started teaching them in Bible school. One of the first verses that I got a hold of was Isaiah 26.3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Mind stayed on thee. Mind. This is my thought life. My mind stayed on. Now, somebody said, I don't like this teaching on the mind. It sounds too new agey. The difference between new age and, 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 and what we're teaching is they, they want their mind stayed on the great nothingness and just, just open yourself up to, the, you know, you ever heard some of these strange things? They say, no, Christians don't open their mind to the great nothingness. They open their mind, they put their mind on the Lord. How do you put your mind on the Lord? You put your mind on what he said to you. Amen. And if something comes that's against what he said, you answer it and say, no, the Lord said. And you, you don't just fight thoughts with thoughts. I didn't finish that. You do it with words. You do it with words. So anyway, but years ago I was learning this. They first started he- hearing this, and that verse was the first verse that I really got a hold of. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. So I'm like, okay, okay. I, I see that I, I'm supposed to do. The, 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 I didn't get the full revelation of that verse at first. I just got the part that I'm supposed to do something with my mind. It's not just... Whatever comes to my mind is just what I have to think about. No, I, I am the steward of my thoughts. So I, I started realizing that. And so, but I was, I was still not succeeding at this. And I was still struggling with it. I, I didn't have enough knowledge or understanding. Uh, and so, but anyway, and I, I'm, still, I'm still oppressed and living, living some, you know, tormented, tormented thoughts. So I'll never forget one day I was driving home from work and I was... Uh, I was reaching out to God for some answers. I said, God, I need some more answers. I know, I know now I'm supposed to, uh, you know, not every thought that comes to me is mind food for me. It's not something I'm supposed to think about. I'm supposed to keep my mind stayed on the Lord, so forth and so on. Amen. 
Right here's a good test. When somebody walks out, your mind stays on what? You see how uncontrolled people's plot size are? <laughs> yeah. So, but so I, I said, Lord, I need some help. I need some, Lord, help me. I, I, I know it's not you. I know it's me. I don't understand this right yet. And I'll never forget it. I was turning the corner. <laughs> you don't know about this, but Broken Arrow has some apartments. We lived in some apartments. They changed them, their name to Parkwood Apartments. And it was on the corner of Main Street and Mason Drive. I turned the corner off Main Street in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma to get on Mason Drive and the Spirit of God rose up on the inside of me because I'm reaching out to him for answers. He rose up on the inside of me. He said, look at that verse again. You're doing it all wrong. Like a flash, I realized I had only seen the first part of the revelation that I'm to keep my mind stayed. I don't want to control my thought life. But what, what I didn't say, what I didn't see was, because he said that you're doing it all wrong. I was just saying, I'm not, I was just thinking, I don't take those thoughts, those oppressive thoughts. I was not, and I was just kind of keeping my mind empty. He said, you're doing it all wrong. It's not, don't think on those thoughts. It's turn from those thoughts to think on what God said. Like a flash, I saw it. And that was the beginning of my freedom in my mind. Hallelujah. And I have been learning. I've been practicing that for years and getting better at it. I keep feeding my spirit on it, and I keep going over these truths. And, and these things have really, really, really transformed my life. I had a good opportunity just uh, uh, I don't know how long it was after that. Uh, I learned... I learned that this is where, this is where, see, there's victory for your mind, but then this will also help you. Uh, boy, I don't have time to get into this. You don't believe God with your mind, but it is part of keeping your attention on the Lord is part of walking by faith. Heart, faith, heart is, uh, faith is of the heart. But um, for time's sake, let me say, I was learning to do this and walking by faith. Will, if, you, if you look through the New Testament and the Old Testament, many of the verses we talk about faith from, a lot of them will talk about your attention. Take about Romans 4, where it talks about Abraham. The Bible said he considered not his own body. There's things that you're, you're authorized from the Word to turn away your attention from them. <laughs> but and then there's so many verses that we go to. Matthew 6 is one of the greatest ones. Anyway, so I learned, I began to learn to do this, and, I, and in my faith life, it was helping me so much. And I'll never forget, I got an opportunity just a few days. I don't think it was a few days. Let's say maybe, maybe within a year after this, to, to practice this real well. There was a, a Oklahoma, little, little Kansas City is this way, but Oklahoma is more this way. Uh, they used to call it Tornado Alley. I stopped saying that because I started getting what I was saying, you know. <laughs> so, so, but anyway, I, I mean, I, I went through a tornado. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. When, when trees this big around are planted in the yard in front of you, you're like, okay, this is different than when I grew up in Pennsylvania, you know? <laughs> Anyway, but, uh, but there was a situation where there was a windstorm coming up. Debbie and I were in the top, uh, top apartment of the, of the building in Parkwood Apartments, one, one of the top, you know, apartments. And uh, a big storm come up. There's sirens going off. They're, they're, they're saying take cover, all this. And so I said, I have a covenant. And I went through Psalm 91. I turned my attention away from all that. And I, I turned to Psalm 91. You know, no harm will come nigh my dwelling, so forth and so on. I bind you, devil. And I'm telling you what, that thing tried to grab my attention and hold my attention. There was wind blowing. There was a pine tree right outside our bedroom window. And it was far enough away, you know, the branches weren't touching the window. But when it was really windy, the branches would hit our window. And that's whenever you better do something, you know. <laughs> but those branches, I said, no, I ain't taking this. I'm holding my attention on what the Word says. And I held my attention, and I rejoiced, Debbie and I both, rejoiced and thank God for the victory. That thing passed, and, uh, and we could hear the hail, hear the hail. And the devil said, that's it, because we didn't have a parking garage. I'm trying to quit. I'm almost done. 
We didn't have a parking garage. Cars, cars sitting outside, and, and now we can hear the hail on the roof. And the devil's saying, that's it. Your car is going to have dings all over it. You know, he's just harassing my, or trying. Not, I'm not taking it, but he's trying to bring those thoughts. I said, Mr. Devil, I'm a, I got a covenant. I'm standing on my covenant, and I'm a, I'm a tither. I'm redeemed from the curse, from destruction. And we just, I just held my attention on the word and stayed in peace rather than, <laughs> Well, the thing passed. The hail stopped. Went, went somewhere else. But I'm laying there, and the devil said, Now, you better get up, real, you better get up in there and look at, look at your car. Your car's all dinged up. That, that's, that hail's bad. You could hear it was bad. I said, Mr. Devil, that car's just fine. He said, You better go look. I said, I don't need to look. See, I'm holding my attention, and I'm fighting this good fight of faith. And I said, I don't need to go look. It's fine. He said, you better get up real early in the morning then because, I mean, you got to get in before everybody else. This, this, whole, this whole area, all the body shops are going to get full of cars real quick. And, you don't wanna, you know, he, and I said, Mr. Devil, my car is fine. Yeah. And right now, but Mr. Devil, I'm going to sleep. I know that's right. You can tribulate if you want, but I'm going to sleep. That's right. yeah. See, I learned to take thoughts captive and answer them with the word. Right. So anyway, I said, uh, and it was, went to sleep. The next morning, woke up, first thought that came to my mind, you better get out there and get your car in there in the body shop before everybody else because you're going to be in a long line if you don't get ahead of everybody. I said, Mr. Devil, my car don't need no, my car's redeemed because I'm, it belongs to me. I said, it's just fine. Yes. Just for that, I'm not going out. The guy had something to do later, a few hours later. But I said, I'm not going out there until I have to go out there. Boy, he tried to harass me on that. See, I'm just holding him in the arena of faith. Anyway, so whatever, 10 o'clock, I had somewhere to go, and I went out get in my car, and my neighbor's out there. He said, man, that was a bad storm last night. I said, I heard it. He said, uh, hey, look, at, look at my car. And it was all dinged up. He said, is your car all right? I said, I haven't looked. I walked over to my car and looked, and not a, not a ding, not a, not a hail damage. Anyway, I looked at the whole thing real carefully. Nothing wrong with it. And the cars, how many of you know you got a car, you got a line, and another car? There's cars on both sides of me, all the way down there, all the way down there. And all the other cars had dings on them. The ones right beside my car had dings all over them. My car had no dings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'd come too late to tell me this doesn't work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to be dragged around by the torment of the enemy. You can hold him in the arena of faith and say those thoughts that come to your mind, you can say, it's written. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil drag you around, drag your mind around by the hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Drag your mind around. Just to everywhere that he makes a suggestion and your mind goes over there. He makes a suggestion and your mind goes over here. And it's fear and he's just dragging you around, just, just tormenting you. you listen, his, you can live free from all that and be his total master. Did you get anything out of the word this morning? Stand up with me. I go on long, but listen, you can take it off of Pastor Debbie's time next Sunday. How's that? <laughs> Glory! Glory! This is where the victory is. Yes. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I said, praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, this has saved me many hours yes. of struggle and being upset. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you do this? Pastor, you're just making it too hard. I didn't write the Bible. And by the way, you can do this. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. You can do this. It takes practice. I said it takes practice. But you can, no, no, no place, listen, you, you're going to have your mind the rest of your life. You might as well have one that you can live with. You can either have one that you can't live with or you can have one you can live with. You may as well go to working on it, renovate, renovate the thing, <laughs> and, and have, it, have one you can live with. I decided to have one I can live with. Now, it's not just going to fall on you just automatically. You have to take thoughts captive. But, but we're going to learn to do that. Amen? Amen? Lift up both of your hands. Father, we're grateful, so, so grateful for your word. It is such freedom and liberty to us. It gives us our answers. We're grateful, Father, for the honor and the privilege of walking in the light of it. Father God, we, we rejoice that these truths were given utterance this morning. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for the life of peace that's available to us. 
We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, if there's one person here this morning that has not made their peace with you, first of all, just through the shed blood of Jesus, not put their faith in what you did on the cross, Jesus, and made uh, uh, what you did their very own by faith, I pray that you would draw them to you like your spirit said you would do this morning. In Jesus' name, with heads bowed, please. If you're here this morning and you say, I don't know right now, (coughs) excuse me, if I'm right with God, I don't know if I I have uh, ever really received the remission of my sin like your word, the, the word of God talks about. And I want a prayer this morning. I've never really made Jesus the Lord of my life. If that's you, then I want you to raise your hand wherever you're standing, please. With heads bowed, please. No one looking around. <clears throat> if that's you, just say, by your hand being raised, that's me. I, I want somebody to pray for me. Anyone at all this morning? Praise God. Amen. If that's you, raise your hand. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's do this. If you're here this morning and you say, I know that, that, that my sins have been remitted because I've put my faith in the work of Jesus on the cross. I know I'm his child. I know I'm born again. Raise up your hand this morning, wherever you are. Just raise up your hand. Amen. Praise God. That looks like everybody in the room. It's good to know, isn't it? It's good to know. Praise the Lord. So uh, this is uh, your assignment this week. Anybody going to do their assignment this week if I give you an assignment? What are we going to do? We're going to sneak up on ourselves, <laughs> and we're going to check up on what, what have we been thinking about. <clears throat> and then don't get upset if you don't master this overnight. How many of you know the Holy Ghost will work with you, work with us until we get better at this? And so don't condemn yourself if you find things you've, you've been taking wrong thoughts, but just, just, just go to catching it earlier. Amen? Hallelujah. Say this out loud. It's going to be a peaceful week for me because of what I I don't allow in in my thought life. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's a joy to minister to you. I enjoy this subject. Uh, Thank you for being hungry and staying a little bit late. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, praise God. If you have a, something you would like somebody to pray with you about, <clears throat> Brother, Mayan, uh, Brother, Maya, Brother Andre and Maya will come up here and they will be available to pray with you if you have something you want somebody to agree with you about. So feel free to come up here. Also, they have treats back here. Uh, let's fellowship before we go. Good, uh, good to see you this morning. Have a wonderful week and a free, uh, untormented week, right? Amen. You're dismissed.